pleasant good morning everyone oh. Okay, come, everybody don't go, please, 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 please. <laughs> Pleasant good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath to all. It's so glad to see all of us who have made it possible to be here this morning and on time. I want to welcome you in a special way. I've seen Mrs. Dean there. Welcome in a special way. I want to welcome in a special way. Pastor Neverson with us this morning. This morning begins our Holy Spirit week. And I want us to all join together as we praise God, as we worship God in one accord this morning. Let's all stand as we approach the throne of grace this morning. Let's pray. Father and God, we thy dear children humbly bow before you, dear God. We want to thank you, dear God, for bringing us to church safely, dear Father. We want to pray, dear God, that you will forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, dear Father. We are happy that today is Sabbath and we can come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. Tune our hearts, our voices as we worship you this morning, dear God. Be with the musicians as they play, dear God. Those on the way, bring them here safely, dear God. Help, dear Father, that today we will have a heavenly time in your presence, dear Father. That we will learn more about you. That we will be drawn more closer to you and be prepared for your soon return. Be with us all and bless us in Jesus' name. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God has blessed. Number 300 and... Eight, eight. Number 388. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God has blessed. Of all the way, the brightest, of all the way, the best. It brings repose from land, it tells of joy divine. Its beams of life descending with heavenly beauty shine. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath holy. Can you get one up for me? Keep the Sabbath holy and worship Him today. Who said to His disciples, I am the living way. And if we may O streams eternal flow Welcome, welcome, ever welcome Blessed Sabbath day Welcome, welcome, ever welcome Set up. They have sacred pleasure. They have sacred pleasure. It's golden hours well spent in thankful hymns to Jesus, the children, dearest friend. Oh, 
gentle love and savior how good and kind thou art how precious is thy promise to dwell in every heart welcome welcome ever welcome blessed sabbath day welcome welcome ever welcome blessed Number 515, number 515. The Lord is my light, then why should I fear? By day and by night, his presence is near. Lord is my light, and why should I fear? By day and by night, His presence is near. He is my salvation from sorrow and sin. This blessed persuasion the Spirit brings in. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. The Lord is my light, who clouds may arise, feel stronger than sight, looks up to the sky. May Jesus forever in glory the train. Then how can I ever in darkness remain? The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. My day and by night, He leads me alone. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. By day and by night. The Lord is my light. Oh, you can do better than that in the singing. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. My day and by night He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song. My day and by night He leads me. The Lord is my light, my all and in all. The Lord is my light, my all and in all. There is in His sight. No darkness at all. He is my redeemer, my dear. With saints and with angels, his praises I sing. The Lord is my light, my, my day and by night. He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy. He leads me alone. And because God continued blessing leads us along, we'll continue singing number 183. Number 183. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me, for he left bright words above and died on Calvary. Number 183. I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me, for he left right words above and died and called for. Oh, I will sing, oh, I will sing of Jesus' love and let's pray. My heart shall, for oh, he has died, that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Oh, the depths of love divine, or the hell can never know how that sin as dark as mine can be. 
be made as white as snow. A blessing of Jesus, love and light. My heart shall give. He has died that I might live. I will sing his love to oh, nothing good, nothing good. For him I've done, how could he such love be so God I own? My heart is one, help me now my love to show. I will sing of Jesus, endless praise my heart shall sing. He has died that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Our hymn of continuation is number 260. Number 260. And we all stand as we sing this song, number 260. Overhold me, Holy Spirit. Overhold me, Holy Spirit, bid my trembling heart and bow, fill me with thy hallowed prayer. Come, oh, come and fill me, fill me now, fill me now, Jesus, come and fill me now, fill me with thy hallowed presence. Thou canst fail me, gracious me, though I cannot tell thee how, but I need thee greatly thee. Come, oh, come and fail. Oh, fill me now, fill Fill me now, fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come and fill me now. I am weak, rest full of faith. At thy sacred feet I bow. Bless divine, fill me, bow and fill. Oh, fill me now. Fill me now, fill me Jesus, come and fill me with thy Lord. Come, oh, come, cleanse and comfort, bless and save me. Cleanse and comfort, bless and save me. Bath, obey my heart and breath. Thou art comforting and saving Thou art sweetly faith Oh, fill me now, fill me now Jesus, come and fill me now Fill me with Thy humble bread Come, oh, come and fill me now Praise the Lord Gracious God and our Heavenly Father, as we have entered into your courts with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your courts with praise, you deserve all our praise and our worship. You are the great I am, said I am, 
you are the conquering lineage above Judah, and we give you praise for all your goodness you have done for us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break us, melt us, mold us, and fill us again with your love. Lord, in time like these, we need a savior. We don't want to be left out, out of the kingdom of the almighty God. He is ever living, ever faithful, ever sure. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness towards us. You carry us safely through another week, and we are here. We are in the funeral parlor. We are here in the land of the living to give you praise and thanks. You deserve it. You die on Calvary cross for us. You are bruised for our transgression. We are wounded for our transgressivity, and our test time was upon you. And by this stripe, you get, we are healed. So this morning, we thank you for all what you have done for us, O oh God. We thank you for waking up this morning in our right mind. We thank you for loving us. You cares for us. You will fight for those. You will fight for your children, fight against those who fight against us. You will take shield and buckler and stand up for our help. We need you, O oh God. Come by us this morning, O oh dear Father, and bless all of us here. Because we are here for forget about ourselves and concentrate on you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Have your own way in our life this morning, O oh God. We praise you. We thank you for opportunity to be in the land of the living, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, knowing that you are the most high God. Breathe upon us, breath of God. Fill us with life and you. Have your own way in our life this morning. We thank you for being here and being here on time to give you praise and to give you thanks and not worry about life because soon and very soon we are going to see the king have thine own way in our life this morning we praise and we bless you in all our name but jesus precious name we pray with thanksgiving amen and amen Welcome to church, brothers and sisters. It is always a blessing when we come into the house of the Lord. I just want to give a special welcome to those who are visiting. Mrs. Dean, we are glad to see you. And Pastor Rico, blessings on you. And we just pray that as we sit together, we will all enjoy fellowship with God. You know when Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room. His disciples, they were waiting on a promise. And as the spirit fell down, they all were refreshed and their souls were blessed. So this morning, we do not have the opportunity to shake hands and hug one another. But I'm going to ask you to stand as we rejoice and praise God. We are going to sing this chorus. We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again in one accord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again, praising the Lord. So let's just all stand. together again praising the Lord we are together again in one accord something good is going to happen something good is in store we are together again praising the Lord one more time we are together again seated. Welcome one, welcome all. Pleasant Sabbath, everyone. The focus for the Sabbath school 
is on Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. And I'll read in your hearing. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now the Lord Jesus Christ talked about the fruit of the Spirit also in John 15. He said that without him we can do nothing, and that is indeed true. And the fruit is what he wants in our lives. He wants fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. In his parable of the sower, he spoke of seed bringing forth thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold in Matthew 13. And so too, he wants us to bear much fruit. Now the only way this fruit can be produced is by the Lord Jesus using the Spirit of God in our lives. He wants to live his life through us. That is the reason that sometimes you often hear that we are not called to live the Christian life, but rather we are called to let Christ live through us because we cannot do it on our own. The Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags. We have no virtues in and of ourselves. Only Christ can manifest in us. No believer can live the Christian life by himself. The old nature cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit. Paul makes it clear in Romans 7 and verse 18 that the new nature has no power to produce the fruit of the Spirit. If you read that verse, he says, the will, To will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. That is the problem with many of us. You ask yourself, how do you do it? How do you produce fruit? And after all, this is not a do-it-yourself operation. But how are you going to let the Spirit of God produce the fruit in our lives? The subject of bearing fruit is a very interesting one. One writer puts it this way. He says, when speaking about it, I like to imagine my ranch. He has a house in the middle of it. And he says, I have a nice nectarine tree right in front. A few zabuka trees, a lemon tree, and many other fruits. And there's always a period over the years where there's always fruit on my tree. I do enjoy fruit, but as far as I can tell, these branches that bear fruit, they just open themselves up. They don't do it by self-effort. They open up and they accept the sunshine and the rain and the little green fruit forms. And eventually, over time, it becomes ripened. And then we are able to eat. Another thing that we should notice is that the limbs of the tree never leave the trunk. They don't get down. They don't run around. Our Lord said, as the branch cannot bear the fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. John 15 and verse 4. Our problem is that we offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, but when the altar gets hot, we try to crawl off. We are to abide in Christ always if we are to produce fruit. Paul is stating the principle of fruit bearing so that we can understand it. The fruit is produced by yielding, by yielding to the sweet influences that are about us. We are to yield to the Holy Spirit who indwells us. The Holy Spirit wants to produce fruit. After all, it is called the fruit of the Spirit for a reason. The fruit of the Spirit, and as our text started out, is love, joy, peace. Notice it is singular. And I'm sure the English teachers among us, some of us, they may look at it and wonder, why are we using this bad grammar? How are we going to teach students that the fruit is? And then list out multiple things. But bear with me. If you go back to the original Greek, the singular is used because it indicates that love is the fruit, and from it, it stems all other fruits. In other words, 
Love is our primary goal. Paul says, without love, you have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. 1 Corinthians 13.1 And that passage of the Bible was never intended to be removed and placed by itself. It belongs to the gifts of the Spirit, and the gifts are not to be exercised except by the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. You cannot exercise a gift without doing it by the Spirit. Love is all important. Paul continues that if, you're give, if you give your body to be burned and you give everything that you have, all these efforts are vainless if you have not love. Another thing that Paul mentions in Corinthians, love never seeks its own. Love is always doing something for others. A gift, in other words, is to be exercised in the church, not for our glory, but for his glory to bring others to Christ. It is a manifestation of the Spirit to all believers. All believers have a gift, and it is to be used for the upliftment of his word. My eyes operate for the benefit of the rest of my body. So too, your individual parts work together to fulfill your body's function. The hand can't operate by itself, neither can the foot. We are all important. We like looking around and sometimes your feet get tired. We are going to leave for a while. But when we come back to the whole body, we rejuvenate. We rest, and then we go again and work together. The hand doesn't fall off by itself. The foot doesn't fall off and do its own thing. We are all part of one body, and it can only be if we abide in Christ that we can do our work. The fruit of the Spirit, and I want to bring to you three important reasons why it is brought to us. It says, the fruit means the result. If you look at it, what is a fruit really? It is a result of reproduction in plants. In other words, let's put it this way. It's a result. It's an outcome of something. It's an effect produced by the spirit in the believer's life. That's why it's, it's important. It is an effect of something happening in our lives. It's also important for a second reason. Unlike the gifts of the Spirit, which are plural, the fruit, unlike the gift, sorry, of the Spirit, of which only some possess, the fruit is given to each believer. In other words, we may have different gifts. Some of us can sing. Some of us can prophesy. Some of us can preach, witness. We don't all have the same gifts. However, the fruit of the Spirit is available to us. Love is available to us all. And thirdly, as the fruit on the tree takes time to grow, so the changes in us do not happen overnight. You do not become a Christian overnight. Okay? You do not get baptized one day and all of a sudden you're changed. It's an ongoing process. So does the fruit start from a green bud, starts to ripen, eventually... We too as Christians start as green babes and then we ripen as we grow in the spirit. So just to bring to you the nine things mentioned here in Galatians, the nine parts of the fruit of the spirit, love. Christ said that his new commandment was that we should love one another. It was new because the love he had in mind was modeled on his own. That is a selfless, sacrificial love and a practical love that is revolutionary in our age. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. The person who is reading the Bible for the first time will be surprised that sometimes joy and persecution come hand in hand. How you may be ask? Well, this kind of joy we are talking about is independent of our circumstances. No matter what we are going through, no matter how grim it may seem, we still have that joy of Christ's reign in our lives that is available to us. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. This peace passes all understanding. And it was first described 
by Jesus to his disciples as his peace. It does not mean the absence of trouble, but the deep peace that protects the life that is hidden in Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is patience. The Apostle Paul longed for readers of his letters to be tolerant and patient in the face of each other's fault. We are to be patient with one another. We have our differences. Just like the different fruits on a tree, our individual qualities make us unique. We are to be tolerant of others and practice the patience of Christ wherever we may go. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness. Wherever the Spirit of Christ is involved in a situation or a person, kindness will manifest. We can see Christ's unique brand of kindness in his parables. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness. It was the transparent goodness of Christ that drew people to him long before his true identity was known. In other words, if you have the fruit of the Spirit in your life, goodness will manifest from you. Others will look at your life and see Christ through you. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. God delights to give his servants responsibilities. As we are faithful in the small task he gives us, he will trust us to do greater things. The Bible reminds the Christian servant of the final day when the faithfulness of his service will be assessed. The fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. Once again, the Bible shows us that true gentleness was seen in Jesus Christ. In the face of extreme provocation, he never lost control and never flaunted his immense power. So too, like Christians, we are called to be gentle. Cannot let things rile us up, no matter how bad it may seem. If we let Christ work through us, if we let the love of God work through us, we can indeed be gentle in the face of anything. We can turn the other cheek, as they say. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Excess and a lack of discipline result from moral weakness, while self-control is the sign of strength and growth in character. Paul said that we should be like athletes who go into strict training before a sporting event. Thus, when the Spirit is in control, we experience the difference he makes. These nine sections, these nine pegs on a tangerine as it may, they make up the fruit of the Spirit that we are to exhibit in today's age. It's a brand new year. And uh, as we look past on 2021 that just went by, we saw that it was indeed a challenging one. And as 2022 is now ahead of us, the fruit of the Spirit, Christ's love, is more important now than it has ever been. Okay? As Sister Nanton prayed this morning, we soon will see the King. It becomes clearer and clearer that the signs are among us. The world is soon coming to an end. If you look at what is going on, all these pestilences that the Bible talks about, it is now more important that we abide in the true branch that is Christ. So my prayer for us this morning, as we go throughout this year, if we want to manifest that fruit, if we want to grow that fruit, share that fruit with others, we must first abide in Christ as he nurtures us. We cannot live apart from the vine. We will wither up and die without Christ. So let us keep Christ at the center, the forefront of our thoughts, as we manifest the year 2022 together. As we go throughout this year, I pray that each one of us will be productive and we will bear fruit, and that others may come to see our fruits and come to know him for themselves. This time we'll be blessed with special song from Sister Bob, after which we'll go into our lesson discussion. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath.
You can spend your whole life building something from nothing. One storm can come and blow it all away. Build it anyway. And you can chase a dream that seems so out of reach. And you know it might not ever come your way. Dream it anyway. God is great, but sometimes life ain't good. And when I pray, it doesn't always turn out like I think it should. But I do it anyway. I'll do it anyway. This world's gone crazy. It's hard to believe that tomorrow will be better than today. Believe it anyway. Believe it anyway. You can love someone with all your heart for all the right reason. And in a moment they can choose to walk away. Love them anyway, yeah, love them anyway. God is great, but sometimes life ain't good. And when I pray, it doesn't always turn out like I think it should. But I do it anyway, yeah. I'll do it anyway. You can pour your soul out singing a song you believe in that tomorrow they'll forget you ever sang. Sing it anyway. Yes, sing it anyway. I sing. I dream, I love anywhere. Good morning, everyone. Come on, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of us. I'm hoping that we've had a good week. We were told growing up that the way you start your new year will determine what the rest of your year is like. So I'm hoping that we all had a very productive first week. Our lesson study. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Thank you, Father, for your presence here this morning. Thank you for your words. This morning, dear Father, I ask your permission to join my humanity with your divinity. And as I present your message, dear God, in truly world, and as we study this, study, study this, the words in Hebrew, help us, dear God, to draw closer to you. We pray thanksgiving in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The book of Hebrews. That is what we'll be looking at this quarter. I want to take us back a little bit as an introduction to the beginning of our study for this quarter. The theme for this quarter, for those of you who have looked at it, and let me ask, has everyone received a copy of our adult lesson study for this quarter? Everyone has a copy? I'm not gonna ask, but I'm hoping that every one of us will take time to spend in the study of God's word, make sure that we start our day or end our day with God's word. In these last days, the message of Hebrews, that's the theme of our quarter's lesson study. This is what we'll be looking at for the next three months. In these last days, and we've been hearing this term used quite a bit recently. As a matter of fact, we sometimes say we dung in the toenail, in the overgrown part of the toenail, which means that soon and very soon, we will see the clouds burst yeah. and Jesus will return. In these last days, 
And secondly, it speaks about the message of Hebrews. The message of Hebrews. I see two things here in this theme. Number one, timing. In these, not in the, in these last days. And secondly, there was a specific message. A specific message. The document of Hebrews as given to us by Paul Evangelist. In the preamble to this, to this quality lesson, the author draws our attention back to Jesus. And he gave us a story there about this gentleman who went into a church and saw a picture about six feet by nine feet tall, just her upper body. And he was drawn especially to her eyes. He couldn't help but stare at her eyes and her eyes seemed to be staring at something. He didn't find out exactly what the secret was to this picture until a few years later when he was able to speak directly to the author, a gentleman by the name of Jimenez. And the author, not the author, the painter said to him, he specifically did the picture that way so that people would be attracted to the eyes. And if you look closely, very closely at the eyes, you see the portrait of Jesus on the cross. In the preamble for this quarter, the author said this is his intention. The book of Hebrews is designed in such a way to draw our attention to image of what Jesus is. But here's something beautiful. It is not just about what Jesus did when he was on this earth, but more so about who Jesus is. And more importantly, who Jesus is to you and I as individuals. This is the God who became man, born of a woman. He was ridiculed, he was scorned, he was rejected by the very people he came to save, and eventually was murdered. And yet, this man, who is God, occupies the center of a universe. We can't help but stare at the one who lived here on earth among us, but without sin, and presently rep represents us irregardless of the state of our lives, irregardless of who we are, this sinless man who came here and died for us is not the one who's representing us. So why is Hebrews so important to us today? The author says in our lesson one today, the letter to Hebrews and to us. I'm not here to teach. I'm here to guide. Pastor Rico, good to see you. We're here to look at this lesson together. And I want to have some involvement. Because this lesson to us this morning and during this next quarter speaks to the issue of Jesus and who he is. And I'm going to ask us to tell me or to tell us what this man, this God means to you as an individual. Why is heaven, why is Hebrews, why is the book of Hebrews so important to us in these last days? Anybody want to respond to that question? Why is the book of Hebrews so significant in these last days? Brother Simpson, could you get the mic, please, and see if you can get... Nobody wants to respond? Why is the book of Hebrews so significant? And I'm hoping that we would have looked at the preamble. I'm hoping that we would have looked at this week's lesson. Because in last week's discussion here, Brother February specifically drew attention, our attention to Jesus as he's portrayed in this week's lesson. He speaks to the issue of Jesus as King, Jesus as High Priest. I see Brother, Ron, Brother Olivier's hand. Brother Morgan, you, you as well. Brother Olivier, in the back. One of the prominent themes in the book of Hebrews is the fact that Jesus is our high priest. Now, I believe we are familiar with the work of the priesthood in the earthly sanctuary, where we came with our sinners, came with our animals, and they were slaughtered, and the blood was sprinkled in the, in, in, in the temple. That's the earthly priest. But Jesus as our high priest. So I'm, I'm wondering what we are not called upon to offer animal sacrifices. So today, what sacrifices are we called to offer as priests? Because we are, we are a royal priesthood. 
So what sacrifices are we today called to offer? Question to us. Let's say Brother Morgan, and then we try to respond to Brother Olivier's question. Brother Morgan. The, bo the book of Hebrews gives a description of who Jesus was and who he is and who he will be. Now to answer Brother Olivier's question, God does not ask us to go and kill a calf offer sacrifice on an altar. All he wants us to do is to surrender our lives to him so that he can walk in us and through us. That is what, that is what, that is what he wants. A contrived heart, a humble heart, one that is prone for him to use for the benefit of others. So all he wants us to do is to humble ourselves before him and give our lives to him so that he can make us what he wants us to be. That is, vessels of truth to those around us. Right now, the world is suffering because of this pandemic. We can't go out and evangelize as we, as we used to, but we can do that second best. You have an iPhone, send messages on it. You have the internet, use it to send messages. Preach the gospel. That is what Christ asks us to do. To finish this work so that his coming will be realized. Okay, take the mic back to Brother Olivier. Um, Brother Olivier's point was that the priests were expected to offer a sacrifice, but we do not offer these sacrifices anymore. But the Morgan's answer to that question was that we offer self up. The concept of a living sacrifice. We offer self up as a living sacrifice. Brother Olivier. He responds, and then let's see if we can look at the issue of a living sacrifice in the, in the concept of Jesus as a high priest. But it, it, it's just a follow-up question. For example, the Bible tells us if we come before God with our sacrifice and we have art against each other, we must leave our sacrifice there, go and make amends and come back and offer it. So when we come, for example, we came through this door this morning, what have we brought with us? What is what God expects us to bring with us when we come before him? Very, very pointed question. Leave your gift at the altar before you come sac to make a sacrifice if there's an issue. But I want to touch on the issue of the living sacrifice because we are expected to offer ourselves up as a living sacrifice. In, the light of, in light of what we understood the sacrifices to be in the early years of the Israelites, how do you see this concept of living sacrifice fitting in nowadays, Brother Nolly? There are two things that were involved in, um, in the earthly sacrifice. One was the lamb that represented Christ. But the other thing which is very important, we don't talk about it, was the obedience of the sinner. Because the lamb would be ineffective if the sinner was not too obedient enough to come and bring the lamb and ask for forgiveness. And it's the same thing that happens here. You remember what Saul said to, uh, what Samuel said to Saul? To obey is better than so when we talk about the sacrifices what is demanded of us is obedience to the requirements of jesus and as you say bring yourself a living sacrifice jesus calls us to participate in his death and suffering we are called to a ministry of suffering so we have to forget the comforts of our life and our own dreams and aspirations and sacrifice ourselves to see that the mission of jesus is complete in the world through us. I want to go back to the issue of living sacrifice. There has to be death. There has to be the shedding of blood. Jesus shed his blood in all places, but now he said as a lamb. But the issue of living sacrifice means that I must be willing to die to self. I must be willing to lay down my life, and this baptism allows for that to be buried in the water of baptism. And as we rise, we're supposed to rise in quote-unquote newness of life. To begin a new life. To begin in living a new life. This concept of living sacrifice, as Brother Nolly just pointed out, means that we must be willing to obey totally and completely what God says. There's a text that says, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. It is not enough to worship him in spirit. 
If you're not worshiping the truth, it is not adequate. But Holy Ghost question. If you're not all, if you're not worshiping, if you worship him, worshiping him in truth, but not in spirits, still not acceptable. So what does Brother Olivier mean when he says, leave your gift at the altar, come inside here? I want to send it to Malachi. The book of Malachi, I started looking at Malachi a little more closely when I went to the Bible recently. The book of Malachi, and I would advise us to look at Malachi. And I'm starting to do something on the book of Malachi, and I will eventually present it here. But Brother Olivier, I want to touch on your question. If you come to church, Brother Olivier, use the door. To present your, your gift to the altar. Leave it there. Go make it part right. Malachi speaks to the issue of offering up retarded, disabled, foolishness. He says to us in, in, the, in Malachi, you will not give, it to, give that to the Prime Minister. You will not give it to Ralph Gonzalez. Why are you bring it to me? And your sacrifice, your worship must, become, must not become tainted by the attitude you bring to this door. If your worship is not willing obedience to the will of God, leave it there and go home. Fix yourself. Get your part right with your neighbor and with God because your sacrifice, according to what I understand from Malachi, is not acceptable. Maybe Brother Pastor Rico will give me a little more light because he's more studied than this more. I want to go back to what Brother Olivier started. The issue of the high priest, Jesus as high priest. Adventists believe in the sanctuary, the sanctuary system. We believe that when you die, the next face you see is going to be Jesus' face. And I want us to go to, let me see, Thursday's, the pink section and Thursday's section. The pink section, it says, considering our understanding of the state of the dead, and that as soon as we close our eyes in death, the next thing we know is the second coming. Why can we say that all people have lived in the last days? And we're looking at the issue of the last days and our lives. Because there might be no tomorrow for us. We might die today. And we don't see tomorrow. Or oh, Jesus can show up today. Which means that every day you live could be your last day. We're therefore living in the last day. We must therefore live our lives. Every single day of our lives. As though it was the last day. So what is the message of Hebrews to us? Um, the memory text for this week says, and I have to go too fastly, fast, <coughs> quickly. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And I believe this memory text encapsulates the Christian life. And as we look at this week's lesson, we understand exactly what this memory text is saying to us. Because when you look at um, Monday's lesson, the struggle. And at Tuesday, Malay. Wednesday, we were encouraged to press together. And Thursday, we were advised to look at it as though we were in the last day. Now, stop me as we go along, okay? If you have questions or if you have any comments. On Sunday, we looked at the glorious beginning. And we looked during this lesson, or in Hebrews, at what happened in the early part of the Christian walk, in the early part of the church. And there was a lot of energy. This passage implies, Hebrews 2 and 3 and 4, that the audience of Hebrews had not heard Jesus himself preach. Instead, he had received the gospel from other evangelists who had announced to them the news of salvation. When you look at Hebrews chapter 12, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says the message came to us directly from Jesus. But these individuals are now hearing it through other individuals, through evangelists. Paul says that the evangelists had confirmed the message in them and that God himself had borne witness both with signs and with wonders. So let me ask this question. We're looking at early beginnings. You have a church that has this new message of salvation. And it is being born upon, um, being made stronger by the fact that there were miracles, there were signs, and there were wonders that people saw. Are we today at a disadvantage Trying to preach the message of salvation. Is the Seventh Adventist Church in call at a disadvantage in presenting the word of God to the world? What do you think? The Bible says, the Bible says that it was born out with signs and wonders. 
God provided experiential confirmation of, this, of the gospel by signs and other powerful deeds. Do we see powerful deeds today? For the Morgan. There's an old statement which says, too much that is given, much is respected. We have been given the privilege of preaching the everlasting gospel to a dying world. In Revelation 20, 14, 1 to 12, you could assess, assess 6 to 12 if you want to go that way. We have been given the privilege of evangelizing this world. So we are fortunate as Saint Adventists more than some others because they believe, most of, most of them only believe in love and not the Ten Commandments. They will preach all along. I once talked to a, a pastor and I asked him one Sunday, pastor, I said, why don't you preach? Thus said the Lord, the Ten Commandments, telling me that the Ten Commandments was abolished, so he's, uh, all, all he have to do is preach love and grace. I said, well, but if you look at the, the New Testament and the Old Testament, both of them speak about the law and grace. So you can't have one without the other. And he was trying to justify himself by saying that we are not under the law, but we are under grace. So all I have to do is to preach grace. If, you're not, if you are not obeying God's laws, then you're wasting your time. The Bible says both of them go hand in hand. So we, have, we as a church have been privileged enough that God has given us in these last days the judgment, our message, that is to preach to a dying world. I heard Sister Brown say, no, we're at a disadvantage. Do we still see signs and wonders? Do we still see miracles? I guess we're not very convinced that there are signs and wonders out there, that there are miracles. Do you know that every day of your life is only given to you by the grace of God? Sometimes, as leaders, we have to beg you to testify. Because we some, sometimes are looking for the massive or the, the big stories. But every time you get up in the morning, is the mercy of God that is keeping you. And we should be willing to say to God, thank you very much. I, I don't know about you. Sometimes, I remember a few, a few months ago, I was going home and... I gave a similar one when I was living in Carl, and I was going down to Argyle. I didn't have a, a gate opener on my, on my gate, but I'm going down and it's pouring. I mean, it's pouring, it's pouring, it's pouring. And I said, Lord, I need one minute to open the gate and get inside. The rain held up while I was about 100 feet away from, about 100 yards away from my gate. I got out, closed the gate, opened the gate, went inside, closed the gate, drove into my garage. And as soon as I got into the garage, it started pouring again. Coincidence? God listens to praise. Signs and wonders. Let's go into Monday's lesson. In Monday, he speaks about the struggle. And if you look at the start of the lesson, it seems to indicate that we were peculiar people. We should stand out. And that's what happened in the days of the people of Hebrew. In the, in the book of Hebrews, they were peculiar people. But because of their peculiarity, they suffered. They were imprisoned. They were beaten. They were physically abused because of their peculiarity. And we understand that as Seventh-day Adventist Christians that sometimes this can happen. I've read stories time and time again. I've seen stories on, on 3ABN of individuals who struggle with the fact that they confess that they're Seventh-day Adventists. So many people lose their jobs. Some people are abused. I have one gentleman right now who is looking for a place to stay. And my, my worker asked me if he was going to stay at my dad's house. And I said, we're going to look at it. Because here's the, here's the problem. His girlfriend was a seminary Adventist, and she started studying with him, and he eventually got baptized. They're living at his grandmother's house. And now he's, quote, unquote, getting hell from his grandmother because he became a seminary Adventist. Your struggles will be real because of the fact that you're a peculiar people. And this is what's happened to the Israelites to the new, new church. This was happening because of the peculiarity, because they, was, they stood out and were different. They were abused, they were persecuted. 
And so we end up in Monday's lesson, the concept of Malay, M-A-L-A-I-S-E. Do we know what that term means? How many of you went to the dictionary to look for what Malay means? It's a strange word. It's pronounced, the S is not pronounced. Malay. Do you understand what Malay is in relation to what we're studying? And keep in mind that this lesson is not just for the Hebrews, it's also for us today. What does it mean when, it's, when you have Malay? It's a medical term. Anyone? Endurance? Not quite. Actually, the opposite. Let me tell you what the dictionary says. A general feeling of discomfort. Illness. Or uneased. And the cause is very difficult sometimes to identify. Let me repeat that. It's a general feeling of discomfort, illness, or unease. And the cause is difficult sometimes to identify. The readers of Hebrews were successful in keeping their faith and commitment to Christ despite rejection and persecution. They fought a good fight and came out victorious, but also weary. Now, I want to, we were reminded of the story of Elijah. Elijah went hiding when um, there was this famine. And he came back out to a glorious victory. We know this story upon Mount Carmel. He had to kill off all the, the, the idols of the prophets of Baal because God proved himself. There was this amazing victory, and immediately after this victory, where do we find Elijah? Where do we find Elijah? In a cave, hiding, fearful for his life. And this was what was happening to these, these children, these, um, these um, new Christians. Powerful victory. Church was growing leaps and bounds. But after this victory, where the church was growing, Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. Their miracles, their signs and wonders, they got weary. They were being abused and found themselves in a situation where they were getting tired, they were getting discouraged, despondent. They were having what in medical term is an illness. They were mentally and physically distraught. Hebrews tells us, that the readers tells us that the readers contain continue to experience difficulties, verbal and probably other kinds of attacks against their honor, and eventually they began to suffer. But a reaction such as frequently follows high and glorious success was presented or pressed upon these individuals, and they found themselves experiencing Mali. I'm going to come back to that term later on when we get to, to, um, to Friday, but an early. We're still on that topic of abuse and verbal attacks and so forth. The thing is that many of you inside, even some older ones, you weren't around in the early days of Adventism in St. Vincent, but I was. Because, yeah, I'm not as old as some of you, but I was. I was, I was born an Adventist. I remember the time when we had only one pastor in St. Vincent, Pastor Hitler. You know, and he one was covering the whole district, and you had only about four, five thousand, seven Adventists. At the time I was conscious enough of what it was about maybe for less than that Adventist in St. Vincent. I remember one incident because the thing is, is the physical things that we do that they attacked and the big thing they talk about them, the Adventists don't eat pork. And that was the biggest thing in them days. There to be different, we don't wear jewels. We still don't, don't eat pork. But there was this friend of mine who were playing cricket in his yard and so forth. His parents killed a pig in the backyard. You know what that guy did? He went behind, he took a piece of the pork, and he came, and he pushed it by my mouth. And I said, I'm not to eat pork. You eat pork now, though. But the truth is, what happened in the end? He became a Seventh-day Adventist. His mother, his sister, his whole family, and all his children are still in the church. And the church has grown. But the thing is, that was the early days, just like in the early days of the prophets when they started. And when their message began to sink in and started to, dis to, to, to affect the comfort of those who were hearing it. They turned on him later in a bigger way. Same thing is going to happen to the Seventh-day Adventist church. We'll not be able to buy and sell. We'll be persecuted. We'll be jailed and imprisoned for preaching this doctrine because we will be disturbing the status quo of society then. So we are going to be facing the same malaise that Hebrews is talking about here. Mm. 
So you just got to be faithful and stick with it. We know we are saying and we're teaching and we're doing what is right. Don't give up until the end. Amen. Thank you, Brother Nali. We want to welcome our brother and his family who just came in. Good to have you in church this morning. Wednesday, saints pressed together. And in Wednesday's lesson, we found out about how God dealt with Elijah. Tenderheartedly, caring, lovingly. Elijah's hiding out. Mali. He's suffering from despondency because of the threat of Jezebel. And Jesus, God came to him and asked him simply, what are you doing here? There was a thunder, there was lightning, there was earthquake. But God wasn't there. God presented himself in a still, small voice. And he encouraged Elijah. This is what Wednesday's section is about. Pressing together. We need to emulate God's attitude, God's behavior, and be a loving, caring church. Looking out and reaching out to each other, encouraging one another. Because we will get there. We very often get there because of what's happening around us. Last year, many, many individuals got there. Let us reach out to one another. Thursday, these last days, these last days. There is a very important element that the apostle em emphasizes that urge, has urgency to its exhortations. The readers are living in the very last days. For yet a little while, the Bible tells us, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Encouragement for us. It doesn't matter what we're going through now. The rewards of our Christian life is not here on this earth. Many of us will struggle. But he who promised that he will come, will return. We know that because he promises. This last exhortation reminded the readers and us about the dangers that the people of God have historically experienced right before the fulfillment of the entrance into the promised land. And on Friday, on Friday, listen to this carefully, a gentleman by the name of David De Silva explains clearly why the early Christians suffered persecution. Christians adopted a lifestyle that would have been considered antisocial and evil, even subversive. Do we find ourselves being antisocial as self-neven Christians? Do we sometimes find ourselves neglecting our social responsibility? Neglecting the folks out there because we consider ourselves peculiar and a little bit above. Last section, last paragraph has this to say. For the disheartened, there is a sure remedy. Faith, prayer, work. Faith and activity will impart assurance and satisfaction that will increase day by day. Have faith in God. I said I would go back to Mali. I went and Googled Mali and I went to the section. How do I really reduce my Mali? Or if you want to pronounce Malis. How do you reduce it? And this is what the response I got was. Plenty of rest. Exercise. Eat properly and regularly. So let's assume for the sake of argument that we find ourselves feeling discomfort, unease, and sick where we are. Let's assume for the sake of argument that we are not as energetic full of fervor, passionate enough about God and his work and getting home to heaven. If we find ourselves in a position where we just feel lackadaisical and complacent and we can't seem to find the energy, how do we reduce that? Google says, plenty of rest. Plenty of rest. What are we doing today? Come on, talk to me. What are we doing today? We're resting. The Sabbath is a day of, that's what Sabbath means, rest. Which tells me that we must observe the Sabbath fully and completely. Plenty of rest. Coming to you, Brother Morgan. Secondly, he says, exercise. How do we exercise? How often do we exercise as seven of this Christian? What is this exercise that God is expecting from us? One, exercise your faith. The last section on Friday speaks about having faith. Exercise your faith. But exercise requires energy, strength, and commitment. Exercise your willingness to be a witness. Break the evangelistic, evangelistic glass ceiling. Health and happiness seminar. We passed out 65 lessons recently. 
How many of us are exercising by taking this message of salvation to those of us, to those who are friends and our family? Exercise. And the third factor is eat properly, eat regularly. If you want to stay healthy, eat properly, eat regularly. What are we talking about here, family? What are we talking about eating here? Talk to me. Scripture. I'm not hearing you. The word of God. The word of God. I studied years ago when I was studying psychology that every single thing that you're exposed to, every single thing you're exposed to, become a part of your repertoire of behavior. I never held that. I did not hold, hold a gun and shoot a gun, but I know to shoot one. Why? Because I saw it. It's in me. It has become a part of me. What I feed myself on will determine who I am. Come on, I should be hearing an amen from that one. What you feed on will determine the kind of individual you are. What do you feed on? Do you eat properly? Do you eat regularly? Brother Morgan, and then I'm going to wrap up. Now, like the, Israel, like the Israelites of old, when they were about to enter the promised land, they were disheartened by men who came and gave them bad report. They believe the majority, and so they get careless. They spend 40 years going around in circles. We are nearing home. We are nearing the promised land. And some of us are getting careless in our spiritual experience. We are taking things for granted that everything will continue as they are. But brethren, we must be on guard unless we look at the signs that is taking place around us. Look at your spiritual life. Make sure that you are right with God because soon and very soon, we are going to, God is going to come back. Whether you believe it or not, he is coming back for people, a prepared people. Don't think you, you because you're saying that when it, you will enter heaven. No, it's a personal relationship with God that will matter. And if you're not doing what is right, living a, a consecrated Christian life, you will be surprised to find yourself ending up raising from your grave 1,000 years later. We are nearing home, so don't get careless. Don't let the wall mold you. You should be able to let the wall know, see Jesus and live a consecrated Christian life. Our topic for this week was a letter to the Hebrews and us. We don't write letters anymore, do we? Do we not write letters anymore? All we do is to write texts. I remember when we were growing up, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't text, we wrote letters. I remember my uncle got his entire family to England because somebody sent him a, a letter form, and, an empty letter form, and he wrote a letter. He wrote the letter as though he was in England asking his family to come to England. And half of calling England right now because of a letter. We're seeing, but the young couples, did you write love letters to your, to your girlfriend or to your fiance when you were, when you were liming, when you were dating? Brother Rodney, do you remember writing love letters to Sister, Sister Rodney? That's what we did. We wrote love letters and we look forward to love letters. What do you find in a love letter? When you write a love letter to somebody, what do you find in this love letter? Love words. What else do you find in love letter? Complimentary stuff. You write love letters because you are in love and you, you express that love to one another. We've heard that the Bible is God's love letter to us. I have to throw this one in. I remember a friend of mine who was in love with this, this girl and he sent this thing to her. Um, you know, they used to have these, all these little notes. My heart is like a cabbage divided into two. The leaves I give to others, the heart I give to you. Sister Morgan, you know about that one, right? I like this one that this guy made up. I love you like how hog love mud and donkey love breadfruit bush. That where you are, there you are bound to be is. Where you are, where you is, there you are bound to be are. You wrote love letters. This book is God's love letter to us. And I wish I had the time this morning to get us this morning to tell us what's in this book that makes you believe that this is God's love letter to us. You are the apple of my eye. God's love letter to us. 
He's telling us how much he loves us. Are we winning God's love letter to us? Come on. Are we taking time to speak to spend with God and to read God's love letter to us? Are we? But the Morgan just said it clearly. We are on the verge of the promised land. Right before they went into the promised land, the children of Israel got discouraged. Don't get discouraged. The love of God facilitates our entrance. Don't let it go. Hold on to the love of God. Pray every morning. Teach me how to love you. Let me fall in love with you every day. And with your word, our faith will see us through. God bless. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So glad to see so many of you worshiping here this morning, Doc and family. So glad to see you worshiping this morning with us. I just want to remind us that today begins our Holy Spirit week. We have Pastor Domian Neverson with us today, who is going to be presenting, and we're going to be online via zoom this week so log on to our website our youtube page as we worship god in one accord in our holy spirit week from today on to next sabbath we'll be on on sunday night and wednesday night and on friday night on Monday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night, we'll be joining our sister churches called um, Mount Mariah and Stubbs in their Zoom program with our pastor, Pastor Kerr. All right? Deacons and deaconess, we have a short meeting just after church, deacon, deaconess. A short meeting just after service today. We have our AY program begin at 4.30 this afternoon. Our AY program continues, the church continues at 4.30 this afternoon in our AY program. Right, I think these are all the announcement from my end. Let us continue to worship God in one accord. Our praise team. While we are waiting on the priest team, Brother Colville just want to thank the church and the directors for, the board of directors for allowing him to have that concert. You want to thank the church very much. And there are a few members who are not well, who are not here with us today. Um, we want to ask that you will pray for them and their families. You know, at this time, um, COVID-19 is very rampant in St. Vincent and Grenadines. I want to ask that we will follow the protocols, ensure that we wear our masks at all times, ensure that we sanitize, and ensure that we do social distances. When speaking with someone, please ensure that you wear a mask. And I, I noticed there's a little trend at Holland now that when we're speaking, we take off our masks. We don't really have to take off a mask. If you speak right under the mic, everybody will hear you very clearly. All right? It's only the, the preachers, because they preach for a longer period, that they would use the higher platform and take off their mask. But please, try to keep your mask on and ensure that you sanitize 
at all time. God bless. Our hymn of continuation is number 264. Let's all stand as we sing our hymn of continuation, number 264. Please be seated. It's time for the offertory and, and coming out, I miss my page. This morning, I'd like to invite the deacons to come forward as we take up our tithes and offerings. Deacons, I'll go ahead until they come. The church budget. First Samuel sixteen seven, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. To value riches more than character is one's worst choice. The world usually judges people by how much they have materially. And character flaws in wealthy persons are easily overlooked. God, on the other hand, judges us not by our wealth, but by our character. How do we judge ourselves? Do we judge others? What do we pray for when we pray for ourselves? Material things or the development of the character? When one starts thinking more about, one that, about what one has than who one is, one is value and riches more than character. Proverbs 3, 13 to 16 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, 
those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies, no, no tin you desire can compare, sorry, no, nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honor. The appeal today is, wisdom is better than riches. May you consider this as we worship the Lord in Titan offerings today. Do our offering song, please. Bow our heads. Dear Father, we thank you for these blessings that you have given to us, for giving us health and strength, for going out to work, to be able to earn a living, and for the returns that you have given to us, so that we can return our tithe and offering and our other gifts. We hope that this money will go to further your work and be used, especially to bring this world to an end, so that you will come soon, is my prayer. Amen. Say good morning, church. I hope that all of us had a wonderful week. How often we speak to God, that's matter. So right now we are approaching the throne of grace. Can we all, who is this possible, kneel? And if not, reverently bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. of the well all around to your throne where grace does
our gracious and ever loving Father, who art in heaven, all that be thy name. This morning, Lord, we come before you, thanking you for what you have done for us during the past days of the week, sustaining our life, putting food on our table. We say thanks to you, Lord Jesus, for your providing ability for human beings. Because you have created us from the dust of the earth. Therefore, we honor you in praise. This morning, Lord, we come to empty our hearts and we come that you may refill us with your love that you have provided with us. We bring before you, Heavenly Father, our divine service. Be with the one that will be breaking the bread of life to us that may draw some means of bringing us closer to you and to assist others by telling them of your love and what you have done for us and you could do for them. So into your hands we commit this midday divine service to you. Bless and direct. And may we all be filled with your spirit today in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. Hospitality is an act of benevolence that God expects of us. And so I'm here this morning just to be benevolent and to welcome you into God's presence here today. I want to welcome all our visitors in our midst. Sister Dean at the back, you were welcome earlier, and I want to further welcome you into God's presence this morning. Sister Guy and family, I know you have not thrown away Guy, even though you have your new surname. I want to welcome you, Doc, into our presence this morning. I notice your husband is joining you today, and you have the children with you, and we want to welcome you in a very warm and special way. I want to welcome home Pastor Neverson. We are so happy to have him here with us today. I see our newlywed in our midst, brother and sister Paris, and I want to welcome them in a very special way to call her this morning. I know you're going to enjoy the fellowship here with us today. And to all our regular Visitors, I want to welcome you into God's presence in a very special way. And to those of our online viewers, I welcome you into our presence and into God's presence this morning. I trust that your worship experience is going to be as just as awesome as we are having it here in God's sanctuary. Jamali and Sharika, welcome. We are happy to have you at Caller this morning. Amen. Today marks the beginning of Holy Spirit Emphasis Week. And I just want to borrow the words of the songwriter, Brian Wren, that says, There's a spirit in the air telling Christians everywhere, Praise the Lord that Christ revealed living, working in our world as we worship the Lord today in the beauty of holiness. May you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you where your trust is without borders. 
May you allow the Holy Spirit's presence to be with you today. And the songwriter continues to say, may his spirit fill our praise, guide our thoughts, and change our ways. God is Christ, and he has come to say, we can see his power today. May you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And as we fellowship one with another today, may your hearts be blessed. May heaven come down and may glory fill our souls. Welcome one, welcome all. At this time, I'm going to invite one of our youths, Colville Thorpe, who celebrated his 30th birthday yesterday to bring a testimony to us. I know the young people usually say when they celebrate their 30th birthday, they are celebrating their dirty 30. But I noticed one of Colville's friends said to him yesterday, I'm glad you're not celebrating your, your dirty 30, but what's to the effect that you're celebrating it with praise to God? And we know that Colville had a consort as a means of celebrating his 30th birthday. Colville is going to testify this morning. Let's welcome him. Good morning, church. It's good to be 30. <laughs> 30 is a good age. And I would know that because I've been 30 for all but over like 24 hours. <laughs> um, well, Sister John, I don't know if my birthday was not dirty because I'm single, but <laughs> that's left to be um, uncovered. Um, so today, I'm actually going to talk about my um, consort. Let me ask a question. Have any of you ever had an activity that you're about to participate in? This morning, we talk about the children of Israel and them crossing over Jordan. You know that there was going to be a testimony on the other side, but you had no idea what the challenge was going to be. So like I said, my testimony this morning is about the concert that we, we just had. Now that is not the first concert I planned or spearheaded. So I remember when we came for our first rehearsal and I gathered the team together, just, just where this family is sitting, I gathered the team together. We were kind of scattered on the chair. And I said to them, listen, guys, Sonali was part of the team. I know I have never done one of these things without some sort of hiccup. Something is going to go wrong. So I'm telling you guys from now, just prepare for it. The devil doesn't like to see when young people using their gifts and talents for his good. So every time I plan something like this, something is going to go wrong. That's what I told the team at the, at the start, before we started our first rehearsal. Little did I know <laughs> the magnitude of um, stress that I would experience. So one of the first things that went wrong was the date that we had for recording. For whatever reason, we couldn't meet and record on that particular day. And... Unfortunately, we actually had to record the night before Javel's wedding. And that was not something that I necessarily wanted to do. But I wanted to record it early. I recorded the first week in December. Because if they had any hiccups, they would have enough time to fix things and do edits and that kind of thing. So that was the first hiccup, the date. Couldn't get to record the date that we wanted to. So, unfortunately, it was the day before Javel's wedding. So you could imagine the kind of peace. Came on the night. Um, recordings went how recordings go. You, you might budget for two hours, but... <laughs> you might budget for two hours, but... Inevitably, you would go over, over whatever time you possibly budget for. So we went... I, I think we, we did well, though, Sonali in the time that we, we recorded. 
Now, without getting too technical, I don't know how much of you view the concert, without getting too technical, we had some backup singers. There was Rinaldia, Camelia, and Shariel. When we got the recordings for the concert, I was listening to the recordings on my computer, and I said, wait, am I hearing Shariel's voice twice in the background? So I went, I, I listened to her voice, and I listened to the, another track that was supposed to be somebody else's voice, but I, hear, but I heard her again. And I was like, oh my God. At first I thought it was one song, but turns out for the entire concert, <laughs> we didn't pick up um, Rinaldia's voice in the mics. So, like I said, we recorded early, so if we had any hiccups, we were able to do it over. So, we had to call her back, and um, she had to sing over all her parts. So what you saw last night, just you would see her, see her mouth moving, but we actually had to re record her stuff. Um, and that took some time. And we actually didn't get that done until last week. There, there were a myriad of reasons why that couldn't be done. So that was another major hiccup again. So that is sound. Of course, last night was a video production. So apart from song, it's not on the radio, there's video. <laughs> now, what would I say? Let's just say I wanted things to be finished and complete with by Wednesday. And there were things that could not, didn't happen for that to happen. For it to be recorded and uploaded by Wednesday. And the level of frustration that I had. My friends know me, I'm a calm person, I'm chill, I'm relaxed. I don't really, but if I get angry, I don't really show it. Just kind of cool, chill, re relax. But the night before, Thursday night, I was just anxious because we did a lot of promotion for this thing. I didn't want to disappoint anybody. And so, there was a point, I'm like, God, we're really going on. We're, go we're going on. We're going on. What happened? What happened? I'm doing this stuff for you. And what happened? If I was going to do something sinful, it would have been easier. So why can't things just go smoothly? And I had to remind myself of what I told the team. I said, I have never done one of these things and something has not gone wrong. So yesterday, <laughs> so I'm saying yesterday. Yesterday, the video still was not completed for a very long time. So presently, there are two persons on the team who has COVID. And one of those persons, their entire family is sick. So that held up a little bit of the editing and stuff as well. So that was another challenge again. We have COVID, not recording the time we want to. Renaldia's voice not being captured in the song. And yesterday, uh, yesterday was interesting. I, I remember considering the time it would take to upload the video to YouTube. And throughout the entire morning, I was counting. I was averaging my head it might need four hours. So I was going, all right, if we get you by two o'clock, two. Three, four, five, six. Ah, if we get you by three, three, four, five, six. Nah, that's not enough time. We need time. We need time to upload this thing. And I was getting very, very anxious. If you listen to some of the voice notes that I sent to my friend, you could hear it in my voice. I was antsy because, like I said, I didn't want to, didn't want to disappoint people. When the final edit came, I realized that I didn't do something that I wanted. But For those of you who viewed, we know how the story ends. I was able to upload the video, and I was budgeting for four hours for it to take to upload. It took less than an hour. Church, I said it took less than an hour. Um, 
I remember feeling a sense of relief that I, it had uploaded in an hour. And I want to go back. I want to jump back in the story, the testimony. There was a period in point where I wasn't getting the audio. And I was going to take the files and, record and mix it myself. And I remember listening to it and tweaking the things here and there. And being encouraged from what I was listening while toying with the, or making all the tweaks. Being encouraged that, Colville, things are going to work out. Don't stress yourself. Things will work out in time. I remember going through that in the experience. So, going back to the end, that was a little, I have to go back and say that because. I have to say it because sometimes when we're going through difficulties, even within the difficulty, with inside, inside the difficulty, God could give us this glimmer of hope that, that we weren't expecting at that particular point. Sometimes, sometimes it's us really, you know. The light is at the end of the tunnel, but if you look up or you look across or you look down, you wouldn't see in front. And so, Sometimes, I, I believe I took my eye off the prize for a second and began to look at the difficulties. And in that moment, going through it, listening and tweaking with the stuff, I remembered that God would see me through and that we would get everything done in a timely manner. And I want to add to that that I'm thankful for my friends Friends here, locally, regionally, internationally, friends from all over the place that I talk to, that sent an encouraging word to me to help encourage me when I was feeling um, disappointed. I was disappointed yesterday. It, yeah, I, I was feeling like this thing's not going to happen. So I want to thank God for, for my friends for keeping me encouraged and letting me know that things would work out in the end. And as you see last night, anybody watched it in here? What? Well, I know, I know a few. <laughs> as you can see last night, it was a blessing. Hmm? The link, it's my YouTube channel, Colville Top Music. It will be the last video. Um, it's called Colville and Friends 30th Birthday Worship Celebration. It was indeed a blessing. Persons were... Um, receptive. There was a moment in the program I didn't know what happened to the live, live chat and I was able to fix that so that persons could uh, you know, send you the comments. It's there on my YouTube page if you want to see it. So if there was a punchline for my testimony, it would be to keep your eyes on the prize and be encouraged and know that God would always work things out in his favor. And going back to where I started, I have never done one of these things without getting a hiccup. And so too, we can use the draw reference to our own lives. When Christianity is not easy, so when you decide to do something to uplift your almighty God, there are many obstacles that are going to come your way. But don't do like me and look aside and look up and look down. Keep your eyes forward. Keep your eyes forward and know that in the end, God would walk things out. Even though walking out might not look like what you want it to look like, and I'm talking to myself now, even though walking out might not look like how you want it to look, Know that once you put yourself in God's hands, everything would go the way that he intends it to go. So church, that is my testimony for you this morning. I hope my words would have encouraged somebody. And I hope it would encourage you, if not to share my story, you could share your own testimony with somebody in your life and they'll use it as a means to encourage them. Thank you very much.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Our scripture reading today is taken from Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 6, and I will read in your hearing. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly came there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and, the, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Here ends the scripture reading. We will now be blessed with a special song by Sister Lois Carr. Good morning and a pleasant Sabbath to everyone. I never said that I would give you silver or gold or that you never feel the fire or shiver in the cold but I did say you'd never walk through this world alone. And I did say, don't make this world your home. I never said that fear wouldn't find you in the night, or that loneliness was something you'd never have to fight. But I did say I'd be right there by your side. And I did say, I'll always help you fight. Cause you know I made a promise that I intend to keep. My grace will be sufficient in every time of need. My love will be the anchor that you can hold on to. This is the promise. This is the promise I made to you. I never said that friends would never turn their backs on you or that the world around you wouldn't see you as a fool. But I did say like me, you surely be despised. And I did say, my ways confound the wise. I didn't say you'd never taste the bitter kiss of death or have to walk through chilly Jordan to enter into rest. But I did say I'd be waiting right on the other side. And I did say I'll dry every tear you cry. Cause you know I made a promise that I've prepared a place someday sooner than you think you'll see me face to face and you'll sing with the angels and a countless multitude this is a promise this is a promise I made to you so just keep on walking don't turn to the left or right and in the midst of darkness, let this be your light. That hell can separate us, and you're going to make it through. This is a promise. This is a promise I made to you. Oh, this is a promise. This is a promise I made to you. I want to thank Sister Lois for that beautiful rendition. Today, I have the distinct pleasure in introducing our speaker for the hour. He is our very own Pastor Domian 
never son. We had the privilege here at Calder to watch young Domian grow, to love God, to be passionate about church work, and to be a good steward, to be a humble servant. He has been an Adventist for over 20 years. Pastor Neverson is the son of Sister Loretta Macmillan. And I'm glad that Sister Macmillan has allowed me to call him my son as well. He is also the wife of, the husband, sorry. <laughs> Pastor, I know you would forgive me for that. He is the husband of Sister Daleen Neverson and the son of two-year-old Kamar Neverson. Oh boy, I'm getting things all confused. Let me go with that again because I know Sister Daleen is watching online. Kama is watching online, so I need to fix this. He is the father of a two-year-old son, Kama never son. He is the husband of one wife, Sister Daly never son. Sister Daly, welcome. And I know you are giving your support from a distance. And soon, Sister Daly and son will be here to join Pastor Neverson. Yes. Pastor Neverson has obtained a bachelor's degree in theology from the Southern, the University of the Southern Caribbean. And he's back here to serve in God's church. We are really happy that he has consented to be the speaker of the Holy Spirit week this week and I know that he has a message to us from God. This morning, may you give Pastor Neverson your ears. And may you allow God's words to resonate with you as he brings the word to us this morning. But before Pastor Neverson speaks to us, the praise team will now lead in some praise and worship songs. I trust that our hearts are going to be blessed as we continue to fellowship one with another. So good morning, saints of God. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. All right, that song's a little better. Could I ask you to stand as we begin by singing, Blessed be the name of the Lord this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is the name of the Lord. Glory be the name of the Lord. Glory be the name of the 
because we know he is our strong tower, we're going to turn our hymnals to three, two, one. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. your mercies never fail me. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but know that the love of God is always with you. been held in your hands 
From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Anyone know that this morning the song says, and all my life you have been goodness keeps running after me. I think it's David that reminds us that his goodness and mercy chase after us. Happy Sabbath, church. 
All right, let me try that again. Happy Sabbath, family. <laughs> All right, amen. I feel it. Um, <laughs> it is a privilege for me to be here today with you. I, I, I am elated. I'm nervous. I'm happy. But I thank God that I'm not here by myself. I stand on the shoulders of giants in my life. And you are that giant. Call the church has been a giant to me. That I can stand on your shoulders and be who I am today. For without Call the church, I know, I know that I would not have been here. And so I thank God for you. And I pray that he continue to bless you. That you nurture young minds so that they too can share the message, the love of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, it's wonderful to be home. Yes? Um, <laughs> um, there are so many things to say. So many people to thank. So many people to speak about. Uh, first, first, let me say hello to my wife and son. Hello, Kamar. Hello, my wife. <laughs> hello, Daylene. Um, I am here before you today, and, and as I look across the congregation, I see so many familiar faces. And I, I know that there are faces that are missing as well. Um, I don't know if she's here, but a person that ran on my mind, and I'm not seeing her, that's Sister Keva, Brother Laurel. Where, where, where is your wife, Brother, Brother LT? She's, she's here? She's at home. Okay. I hope she's watching me online. Hi, Sister Thomas. Uh, also, Brother February, Eric and, and, and Jamal. I was looking forward to meet, see them today. Send my love. Um, there are so many more. As, as they come through, I, I guess I'll see them. Uh, my mother, <laughs> mommy, <laughs> uh, she's proud of me. and I, <laughs> I know she is. Yes, she's proud of me. And I thank God for her every single day. Um, what else? I don't want to forget anything. Sister Chanel and, and the, the team of young ladies that was here. Um, hey, when I was in Trinidad, right, I used to tune in on some Sabbaths when I'm at home viewing online. And I used to hear you guys sing online. And I used to say, you know, we, we, we need to fix that, you know, because it ain't song to write. But I feel like Brother, brother, brother Batiste and his team, we, we have to buy some cameras and some good mics or something. Because I was blown away by the music I just heard, I was blown away. Calder is doing mighty things and the world need to hear this, you know? So I, I think the church board need to look into that. Yeah, drop a proposal for them, Brother Batiste, so that they can, they can buy some equipment so that the message of Calder Church that they have can reach far and wide, yes? Yes. So that was wonderful, wonderful. Um, it put me in a mood to preach. But there's so many preamble. I am sorry. But there's so many, so many bookkeeping. I want to put it out of the way before. And when I start to preach, you don't, you don't feel me. Call the church still over at 1 o'clock or 1.30. Yeah? <laughs> COVID? All right. Um, my, wife, my wife said to me, um, don't preach long. Remember, don't preach long. But the sermon today is not mine. So if I preach long... Don't blame me. Blame Pastor Clive Dutton. This is his sermon. I would just put it in my own words as much as possible. <laughs> Amen? Amen. All right. I think that is most of it. That is all of it. We'll get into the word of God now. Yes, Lucy. Oh, oh and people call him single. Yeah, he's, he's 30 and single. Um, brother, while you were speaking... Um, I'm talking out to our secret here, but brother, um, brother Simpson asked me, well, he, he commanded me, he said, 
you need to tell Colville what to do, man. So, <laughs> so, so I, I guess you'll talk. But, but I have been speaking. I, I've seen you looking all handsome and sharp. God is good. You know? So somebody will snatch you up soon, man. Hallelujah. What God did for me, he can do for you. Oh, yes. He has done for many more. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word of God today. For there is a word from the Lord for us today. Amen? Amen. The book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And I'll read verse 1 to 4. Just to give you a, 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 the text or, or, or the synopsis of what we're really going to get into. Acts 2, verse 1 to 4. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. I pray that even as I preach today, God will bless the reading, bless the hearers and the doers of his word. For truly the Holy Spirit is in this place and we're going to discuss the Holy Spirit this week of holy emphasis. I pray that God's Holy Spirit will truly be in your life. I don't want it to be in color church because many times you come here at church and you leave here and you leave the spirit right here. I don't want you to leave the spirit here. I want you to walk with the spirit in your life today. I, I, I would ask you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Let us pray as we continue to invite the spirit's presence with us. Oh, Heavenly Father. Indeed, you are good. You are good, wonderful, marvelous. And we thank you for your many blessings. Oh God, I pray today, as I, as I preach, you will hide me behind the cross. Yes, I'm back in the land. But I'm not the one to be lifted up today. You are high and lifted up. Hide the script, oh God. And let your scriptures be seen. Hide the messenger. And let your message be revealed. Bless and keep us. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. So Alexander, Alexander Santrak. His article on scripture and tradition. Is an Adventist reflection on how they relate how, how, how they relate, how the scriptures relate. And he provides a stimulating insight on the role of the Holy Spirit. He makes the following points. He said in his work that we must be aware of our own traditions and do not quench the Spirit of God. He says no church community arose in a spiritual vacuum. We must be spirit-filled students, teachers, and ministers of God's word. Take time to investigate scriptures deeply. The spirit will not come through occasional and brief study of the word Jamali. Uh, openness to God is a prerequisite for re reception of the spirit. He reminds us that we are to be a spirit-filled teacher of the community of faith. Diligently teach the word of God and pray for the spirit of discernment and understanding. We are to be leaders and reformers of the word of God. As I look upon the faces before me today, I am sure that I, I can name out almost all of you. I only see two new faces. And that's the couple right here in front of me. Call the church. You have a work to do in this part of the vineyard. 
you have the message of God to take to his people. I don't want to preach yet. We are to be reformers of the word. And people are to see us and come to know the Lord as blessed. Because he is the blessed one. As I look at the text today, my sermon to you is the promise declared, the promise fulfilled, power in the Holy Spirit. Promise of the Holy Spirit. Let us examine a parallel text, John 14, 15, and 17. Verse 15 of John 14 states, if ye love me, Keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be with you. Now look at this text. In this passage of scripture, the Holy Spirit is given a number of names which defines different functions. He is mentioned as the comforter who will abide with us. Have you been comforted by the word of God? Have you been comforted by the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of God is to comfort the people of God. And so if you are distorted, if your life seems to be in disarray, understand that you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. For it is the Spirit that comforts. He is called the Spirit of truth, who will guide us into all truth. Observe that with each function comes a promise. In John 16, 13, there is an explore, exploration of the term guide, the word guide. What it means to guide us into all truth. The verse, chapter 16, John 16, 13, it says, How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Without the Spirit, we cannot see what is to come. Without the Spirit of truth, we can not worship God. We must understand that the comprehensive panoramic scope of the spirit is revealed in these texts showing how the people of God will move in the last day how they are guided how they should live in these last days for you want to hold a Holy Spirit emphasis week without the spirit madness you want to be a Christian without the spirit? Madness. You want to be a professional Colville Top without the spirit? Madness. For no matter where we go, no matter what we do, we must understand that we need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Oxford Dictionary of synonyms and antonyms defines promise promise as a word of honor a word of assurance a word of pledge or vow this means that the promise of the Holy Spirit to us as Christian believers speaks to us of the omnipotent God who we serve the omnipresent God that we serve the all-knowing, all-powerful God whom we serve. For if we understand who our God is, we understand who the Holy Spirit is. And so, I'm here because I have power.
power from the Holy Ghost. And though I'm nervous, though I'm scared, though I'm perplexed, I have no fear, Jamali, to speak to the people of God because I have power to preach. And so the spirit of truth will come upon us. God is making a commitment to finite beings, finite individuals to guide you into all truth. This includes the revelation of the character of God and his will for our lives. When God makes a promise, there is an irrevocable guarantee that the promise will be fulfilled. I don't think you understand. You know, what does promise mean? I, I share with you what promise means, right? It's a word of honor, Jamali. A word of assurance. And so if I am promised the power of the Holy Ghost, why must I fear? I walk in the face of coronavirus because I got power. Come on, somebody. Do you have power? Do you have power? For we are scared and cramped up in our homes, worried and fearful. Talking about you living in the last days. What is the last day to you? Are you fearful that you're going to lose your life? Are you fearful? Well, I have no fear. I'm not telling you to be foolish. But I have no fear. Because God promised me power. God assures me of the power of the Holy Ghost. And so I'm thankful and I'm not scared to preach the word of God to, to men, to men that are lost, men that are frivolous, men that are weak and need the power of the Holy Ghost today. And so call the church, don't sleep on me. Call the church, don't sleep on me. I got power because I learned about the Holy Ghost right here in this church. And so, why is my people, why are my people afraid? Why are my people afraid? Is it because of the news? Who, who, who do you get your news from? Who do you get your power from? Oh Lord, somebody. God promised us his power. The promise is declared to us that you will receive power. You will receive power. Oh, you don't believe me. Let's turn to the book of Acts. You don't believe me. The book of Acts 1 verse 8. 1 verse 8. It says to us, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. And so without the Holy Ghost stop. I can't come back to St. Vincent. Be without the power, how can I come, Jamali? I have to stay my ground. And when the power comes, no man can stop it. When the power comes, no man can stop it. Top, no man can stop it. I don't want to say it here today. Help me, Jesus, not to say it. Because I want you to know that in spite of the many challenges that I face in my life, Oh Lord, in spite of the challenges, in spite of men questioning my call, questioning where I came from, questioning the, the, the color of my skin, the, the look of my hair, te my texture of my hair, sorry. In spite of it all, the Spirit says, Rico, come! Spent in spite of my education, Top. Top, when I leave here, they don't know. When I leave here, I was a C student. Sister John might know. I came from Emmanuel School. They don't breed many great people over there. Am I right? Not many. They, they breed some, and I give them credit for that. Not many. And so when you go to school from Emmanuel and this here, you from Emmanuel, they don't think highly of you. For, for you speaking not the king's English, you speaking dialect. It's a language too, yes? And so, they think to themselves, that listen, you, you, you are not a, 
you know, you, you're not up there, you know, that, that of the stature. So um, um, we have people. Calvilla leave here as a C student. It's not until Daylene was pregnant, I got my first B plus. When I left school, it was my lowest grade, B plus. You think I did it on my own? No. Because in my own strength, I'm a C student. But in God's strength, in the Holy Spirit power, I am an A student. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank God for his power. And so, the power, it was promised to me. And so I must claim it. Promise declared, promise will be fulfilled. I am living, walking proof of the fulfillment of God's power. Power. Power to witness. Power to witness. Hear what the text says. Acts 1 verse 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Then stay there. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jamali, you can't have the Holy Ghost power and keep it to yourself. You can't have the Holy Ghost power and sit down in the church. You can't have the power of God and stay in your homes and say to yourself that I can't witness for you have power, universal power. Power to witness on a universal scale. And so you sit down at home, thinking to yourselves, I'm sorry people, folks at home, I know the COVID keeping you away. But you can reach out to somebody. God is calling you to use the power that you have access to. Well, I just start. One o'clock, right? Who's the word preacher? Hallelujah. So Jamali, Jamali, hear this. The power to witness is on a universal scale. Yes? It's explosive power. You, you agree with me? It, it's revolutionary power and transforming power. And so if the people of God in called the church today are to revolutionize this place for, for, for me to come spend five years in Trinidad and come back and see the same faces, it means, I, I'm sorry to say it, it means that the power is not in this church. When God, power is given to us, then we must make a difference. We must make a difference. And so you may be sitting in your seats and you're thinking to yourselves, oh Lord, I, I'm not here to curse you. I'm not here to tell you that, oh God, you're not good. What I'm telling you is God has something for you to do. There are lost souls in Calder. I know there is. So you can't give up. You can't give up. You have access to power. Why are you afraid? COVID can't stop the people of God. Acts 8, 1, 8, sorry, mirrors Matthew 24, 14. What does Matthew 24, 14 say to us? It says, and this, put it on the screen. And this gospel, oh Lord have mercy. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in, where? No, it can't be in Olive Oil, man. It's only at my house. No, it's only in Calder Church. This gospel must be preached in all the world. For what? For a witness. A witness, I didn't say it, a witness unto all nation, and then shall he come. And so if you are not using the power of the Holy Ghost, then there will be no end. 
You are what is holding it up. And are you ready to go home? No, Father Tommy, I'm getting fat. I'm ready to go. God is calling you, call the church. You need to wake up. The Holy Spirit must revive this church. It must drive this church. And so you can't sit down. You can't sit down. For the end will come. Promise is declared to us that we will receive power. Promise will be fulfilled to us that we will move with power. And here it is in Acts chapter 1. Sorry, in Acts chapter 2. The promise is fulfilled. What does it say in Acts chapter 2? The link between prayer and the guarantee of the Spirit could not be more compelling of a or, or, or summary, sorry, of the Spirit to come upon us. It is compelling in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. And if we were to summarize the verses, verse 1 shares with us that they were all together in one place. And I'm happy that I have so many people here today because we are all together in one place with great expectations. What are you expecting for 2022? Brother, brother, brother Thomas, I don't want to say Brother Laurel, sorry. Brother Thomas, say to us, say to us this morning that we are going to break the evangelistic glass ceiling. Ella, the people of God can't break the evangelistic ceiling. Madness. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that will drive the people of God to break the evangelistic glass ceiling. Verse 1 says they were all together in one place with great expectations. Sister Baptiste, we must have a great expectation that the Spirit is going to move in each of us. That we are not going to live here the same way we came. Too many times you come to church and you go back home the same. Your neighbors are looking at you the same way. It's not, I know it's not easy to be a Christian. I know. It's not. But you can do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 2. When we're summarizing it says, There was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. They didn't just have great expectations, but they believed. Listen, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. They didn't say they felt the mighty rushing wind. There was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. They believed that when the wind passed through, that the Holy Spirit is coming. That the promise that was declared in Acts 1.8 is now being fulfilled. And so if you are here and you don't believe, if you don't believe, and I just tell people this every time I pray for them, if you don't believe that God can do for you what we are praying for, it can't happen. And so Brother LT, without faith, God people can't go anywhere. And we are becoming a faithless church in 2022. It is sad. I'm not preaching down at you. I'm preaching to us. Because I'm a part of it. And not only am I a part of it, but I just become a leader of it. And so if I come and continue the same thing, I'm worse than you. Verse 3 says, cloven tongues. Cloven tongues, like as a fire, sat upon each of them. Not only were there great expectation, not only did they believe Jamari, 
But they received it. They received it. If you are not receiving the Holy Ghost, then you need to go back to the starting. You must have expectation. You must believe in it. Believe that he will give you the power. And so yes, I want to reach somebody today for God. I believe that I can reach somebody to, today for God. When I came into the island, I came here the 29th of December last year. I preached at a church at, at Upley Hall Church. The, the, the 21st? 31st. And on the 1st, I preached in, in Maranatha. And, and when I preached, somebody came to me and asked and said to me, I hear you speak about you know, the challenges that young people face. And my, 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 my child, my child are having some problems. I want you to pray for them. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed all week. And I asked God, help me to meet that person so that I can really hear what is going on. And when I meet the person, because I did, Sherrick, I did. Amen. And when I meet the person, Jamal is a whole different story. So I am praying to change people's life. And people are praying to stay the same. Why am I battling with the Holy Spirit? And so top, you have to pray that God will give you discernment. Too many times we're not praying for discernment, you know. We are going about this thing thinking that we can do it in our own strength. But without this power of the Spirit, I would have been praying, praying, praying in vain. And when I meet the individual, I said to the person, I, I, I can't believe this. God needs to do something in your life. You need to reach out to God. Too many times, the people of God are battling with the Holy Spirit for people who don't care about their own lives. And so don't, don't just go on the street and take what anybody say. Hey, neighbor, pray for me. What am I praying for? Am I praying that you could receive the Holy, power, the Holy Spirit? Am I praying for, for you to get better or for you to do, what, do the same thing that you're doing? And so there must be transformation when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. There must be discernment when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it without his power. For we are living, we are living, Sonali, in a world, in a world that is faced and perplexed with so many challenges. But God says that he will fulfill power in our lives. And so there's power for somebody today. There is power for us. Verse 4 says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and received the gift of speaking in different languages. The Holy Ghost gave the gift of speaking in tongues to the disciples, but he did not stop there. He did not stop there. He also gave the gift of interpretation. Too many times we want one side of the gift. God is calling us, calling us to do a mighty work. And if we are to speak to people, if we are to witness in all nations, witness to all tongues, we need the Holy Spirit to interpret, it, interpret for us what we can't say for ourselves. You need the Holy Spirit. Your message, the message, the message that Calder Church is giving to Calder is falling on deaf ears. You don't believe me? You have no visitors in here? One, two, three? And they are from other churches. Non-Adventists, put up your hand. One. Non-Adventists, put up your hand. Non-Adventist. If you're not an Adventist today, raise your hand for me. One, two, three. Should I say Adventist, put up your hand? I don't have to. What are you doing? What are you doing for God? Just one. Just one he's asking you to save today. Just one. 
Just one he's calling you to save today. One. One. If whole year you are coming to church and you can bring one visitor, not one visitor, where is the Holy Spirit that is moving us to speak in tongues? Where is the Holy Ghost in Kala Church, in the members of Kala Church? For you are having holy emphasis week, Holy Spirit week of prayer, and you are not bringing anybody to teach them about the Spirit of God. You're wasting God's time. And you come up here and you pray. You're wasting God's time. Again, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to us. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't worry. The promise is declared and it will be fulfilled in you. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, we see the Holy Spirit moved in a way that it, it, it didn't do before. For there were so many people being baptized. The Spirit was moving rampantly. This indicates to us the impact of the miracle when communication with the Spirit is reached. When the people of God are in constant communion with the Spirit, there's dynamite power, Calvin. There's dunamis power, Calvin. There's a power that moves within us that helps us to jump up, to stamp our feet, and call on the name of Jesus. Because though you are sick today, the Spirit can heal you. Though, though your life is in peril, Jesus can help you. The Spirit of God is in this place. Why are we still the same? For if we stayed and just look at the people that was baptized on the day of Pentecost, then We will say to ourselves that this was a vast and big exploration of, of the spirit moving, a miraculous event. But we can't just look at, at the people that were baptized. We have to also look at the leaders, Chanel. At the leaders and the members, because that's what we are. Yes? And on, on, on the day of Pentecost, the leadership and the middle class, the leadership and the members, they liquidated their assets. Assets, sorry. They liquidated their assets to help with church functionaries. Barnabas was a prime example of the Holy Ghost nobility acting upon the human heart. Barnabas became, he became the minister of encouragement that served as the catalyst for a name change. Martin Luther once won. He said that I am afraid that the church and the schools will prove the very gates of hell unless they diligently Labor in explaining the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Scriptures, and engraving them in the youths. And we are seeing that today. We are seeing that today. If there are teachers in the house, you know since the Bible left the school, you are seeing a vast amount of students going way, way, way astray. And you see the rise of the pandemic? It's mad. I don't know if St. Minsu got this. But I remember one, uh, there were so many in Trinidad, so many. But I remember one, especially one, of this young man in online class. 
And he's on online, he's, he's in online class, Jamali. And the teacher is speaking. And this young man, I am certain he knows, is masturbating. This young man is masturbating. And not only masturbating, this young man turned on his video and asked the teacher to give him fellatio. Maybe you didn't hear what I just said. Or you don't understand the word fellatio, but I'm, I'm covering all children. This is what is going on in our world today. And we need the power of the Holy Ghost so that we can fight against the enemy that is truly rampant in our schools and in our church, in our communities. For if, if we realize, if we can recognize, just look at it, we are living in a world where pornography has mushroomed into a multi-billion dollar crime infested industry. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. In our world today, wombs are becoming tombs because of abortion activists, people who don't care for the unborn. In our world today, bisexuality, Colville, is seen as the best option. We need the Holy Ghost, Jamali. We can't do without the Holy Ghost. We can't do without the power that is given to us by the Holy Ghost. And if you are sitting down today and you don't understand how much you need the Holy Ghost, then we are at a loss as a people. In our world, in our world today, Jamali, there are millions, millions of gay pride, gay parade, LGBTQ, all kind of community. And they are taking over our world. In our world today, right here in St. Vincent, if I call a, 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 a vaccination party tomorrow, it ram. But our churches today are empty. Our homes today are empty because we are not yielding to the power of the Holy Ghost. In this world today, it's very much true that Christianity is on attack. We are the most persecuted religion in the world. When there was a time called Will I Remember, not too long ago, it seemed that we were the majority. Now we are the minority. And it means our churches are dying. Because the old ones are dying, God forbid, and the young ones don't know anything about Jesus. They don't know about the power. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Ooh, let me tell you something. Listen, you see the power of the Holy Spirit? But I'm just talking here now. I'm just preaching here for just preaching here sake. I know the power that the Holy Spirit brings. I, I, I'll give you a, a little testimony. I'll teach you how to do a little testimony, Calvin. I'll give you a little testimony. I was, I was at home. And we had, my wife could, be, could testify about this. We had $200. $200. It was about TT. I'm, I'm in Trinidad. If it's, 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 it's that's like, uh, help me somebody. That's like roughly $80, you see? 90? 90 easy call bill. And it was about, it was like, you know, you know those times when, when, when things get real hard just before the month end? So it was about the 25th, 24th, somewhere there. So things real tight. You know, you, you, you're squeezing the last $200. And, and my wife and I, we, we need to make some groceries because Kama needed some milk. And I know, I know, I am so blessed I could have called home and say, um, Brother Rodney, I don't have no money to feed my, my, my son, help me. And he would have helped. 
I know. But I'm going to show you the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is how he works. And I have no fear because this is how he works. Now, Colville, I am home early in the morning. We woke up early because, listen to me, when the devil is attacking you, you have to wake up early and get down on your knees. Fight the fight early in the morning. Before, before the morning break, you're supposed to be on your knees fighting. And so early, it's about maybe 4.30 early. And I said to my wife, I said, babes, we had to pray. We had to pray. But, you know, I'm a preacher. Before we pray, I have to preach. <laughs> so so I, 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 I took out the Bible, you know, and I am, I'm lamenting on Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, Jamali. The Lord will fight for me, and I will hold my peace. And I'm telling my, my wife how much he has been fighting for us. And we can hold our peace with the $200. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said to my wife, it's we had to pray. And I lament, I, I talk real long. Till, my, till like morning almost come. So it was about 5.30. Going to 6. Colville. And when I kneel down by my bed, my son is in the other room. You know how our house is set up? In the other room. And we kneel down and start to pray. Listen to me, I start to pray. Start to pray in Jamali. And I down there and I say, God, this is your $200. We, we wrote on a list. That, that was one of the reasons too. We wrote on a list. I see we write in on a list. And we praying upon that list that $200 can buy that. Jamali, I walk in with the Holy Spirit. $200 ain't nothing. He multiplied thousands already. And so I say, listen. I put down milk, I put down nestum, I put down Irish potato, because I love me Irish potato. I put down, I put down some, some seasoning, because you want some fresh seasoning. And I put down a few things. Listen to me. The list was about 500. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. So I need $500, but I only have two. Holy Spirit power. Kneel down to pray. While we're praying, I'm in my heart lamenting to God. Calling upon his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Colville, I, I'm short, sorry. Colville, listen. While I'm praying, there's a horn blowing outside. Six of, minutes to six in the morning. Who, who, who come in by my place? Man, I don't know you. Stay outside until I don't pray. But the hand persisting. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. I said, I, I, I stop. I said, babes. Prayer have to continue because this, this money have to multiply. Prayer must continue. But I'm dealing with the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. When I get up and go outside, there's, there's, there's this, this, this elder in, in Trinidad. He's from Guyana, Colville. I can't remember his name right now. God forbid. He is teach biblical lit. It, it was one of the last course I did. I can't remember his name now. If you're watching elder, I, I apologize. But I go outside. He's calling me. He said, um, you name Rico? You know Trinidad, right? So I, I be at my door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, I have something for you. Come, man. So I, I push out. I step out. Once he say I have something for me, God be praised. Me not, me not trouble with nobody. God be praised. When I step out, Jamali, and I reach, talking about the power of the Holy Ghost in my life, when I feel like if things are bad, I call upon his name and he provides for me. When I step out and I speak to the, the, the elder, he said to me, listen to me, it's so long I'm looking for you. So long. You're here once you four years now? I say, yes, elder. He said, I'm looking for you. I'm asking all body about you. He said, listen to me, your mother in St. Vincent, when I was in St. Vincent, mommy, bless your heart. When I was in St. Vincent, she cooked a soup for me. I can't forget a soup they ever in my life. And somebody tell me her son is in Trinidad. And so I went to the supermarket yesterday. And when I went to the supermarket, listen, he said, I bought some groceries for you. Go in the back of the vehicle and take out the four box. Hey, listen, church. The power of the Holy Ghost. For while you are yet praying, Christ will answer. 
Come on. Colville, listen. Two hundred dollars even spend yet, and me grocery basket full and overflowing. When I finish, I call Jason. I say, Jason, what we cooking this week? I cooking something for Sabbath lunch because God has been blessed in me, man. I can call upon His name. The power of the Holy Spirit is real. It's alive. No weapon formed against us can prosper. And so, this week, this week, coming to a close, this week, you are here. You are here for Holy Spirit week. I, I don't even know how much days I'm presenting. I don't. And quite frankly, I don't want to, this is not my sentiments with heartfelt. This is the truth. I could care less how much times I present. Because I am not presenting. The Holy Spirit will. He knows your need. He knows what you need. And I will present only what he requires of me. And so when, 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 when Marlon called me, it was before I was even coming in St. Vincent. When, Ma Marlon, not you? When Marlon called me, I said, yes, Marlon. I will videotape the two Sabbaths. But God knows that you ain't coming here to watch me on no screen. God said, listen to me. I'm sending you across to bring a message to my people who are called by my name. This message is for you. I did not bring it. And so if you're feeling offended today, take it to the Holy Spirit. Not to my mother, not to me, not to my second mother. Take it to the Spirit. Father George, the Spirit have a work for you. The Spirit have a work for you. Let me close. He has a work for you. For the saints of old says, Oh, for the flame of living fire, which shone so bright in saints of old, which bade their souls to heaven aspire. Come in distress, in danger bold. We need the power of the Holy Ghost in our church. We, we need him in our homes. We need him in our communities. We need him in our country, in our region, in our hemisphere, in our world. There's a need for the Holy Spirit. Are you going to take the call that God has called you to take the Holy Spirit to all the world so that man, men everywhere can be transformed. We need the Holy Spirit. Why we need the Holy Spirit? Because without the Holy Spirit, we have no power. Without the Holy Spirit, Carville, we can't edify the people of this world. We can't edify our souls. Without the Holy Spirit, we have no effective witness and that's why we have three visitors today. Because call a church, we need the Holy Spirit. And so if you're here today, I urge you, don't look left. I'm not even, I'm, don't look left. Don't look right. Jaffel, don't look to Kimisha. Brother Morgan, don't look to Sister Morgan. Brother February, don't look to Sister February. Christian, don't look to your mother. Don't look to Brother Thomas. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to look within. Search your own hearts today. Search. Excuse me. Search your own hearts. And if you are searching your hearts even now, and you are saying to God, God, I hear the preacher. Kimik, you hear the preacher. And you want to say, God, I need the power of the Holy Ghost. Why don't you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. If you, you don't have to if you don't want it. If you think to yourself that you have it already, then sit down. But if you are in need of the Holy Ghost, stand to your feet. Listen, in Acts chapter 2, the disciples were together in one place, in one accord. And while they were in one accord, 
they were waiting for the Spirit. How did they wait for the Spirit? They prayed. They prayed. Because they know that they can't do it without the Spirit. They know that the work that God, that Christ, who just left them, have called them to, they cannot do it on their own. A.W. Tozer said in his words, he said that if the Holy Spirit was to leave the first church, then everything, sorry, 95% of what they were doing would have stopped and everybody would have noticed. But today, 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 in our church, if the Holy Spirit is to leave us, 95% of what we are doing will continue and nobody will notice. That is where we are as a church. That we are holding on so much to programs. We are holding on so much to religious rites and tradition that we are afraid to call upon the Spirit. That we are not moving in the Spirit. That God is not moving within us. Josie, Josie, I'm telling you, sister, you can't do it alone. Man and can't do it alone. Man and is the first elder, right? Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray for you, brother. Because you are leading God's people. You are a pastor just like me. You are leading God's people. And you can't do it without your wife. You can't do it without the spirit. Hold on to the spirit, my dear sister. Hold on to your husband as he leads God's people. God wants to do a mighty thing in Color Church. A new thing in 2022. And for him to do that, the Holy Spirit must come. The Holy Spirit must come. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit. I don't know what is in store for you for 2022. But I know who holds 2022. And so I put my faith, my trust in him. While I share with you that I stand upon the shoulders of the stalwarts of the giants in this church. I stand upon the shoulders of the Holy Spirit. For I move when he tells me to move. I stay when he tells me to stay. And today, if you are in your seat and the Holy Spirit is telling you to move. And you want to draw to the altar. Protocols being kept. You want to draw to the altar. I want to pray for you. Especially for those who come to the altar. Protocols being established. If you realize that up here, half too much people stay in your seat, raise your hand. But I want to pray for you that God will move inside of this place. I came back here and yes, I have zeal. Yes, I have strength. I'm young. But I came back here and I see Carla Church and I say to myself, God, where is my family? Because you are my family. Same people I left, same people are here. God wants to do a mighty things. All right, protocols. If you want to come, just put your hands. No more, no more persons by the altar. Just put up your hands in the air. We're going to pray. We're going to pray that the Spirit will move in Calder Church, in Calder, Calder and its surroundings. That as the church moves, people will be baptized. Men and women will find the love and the joy that we have. But I was telling Sister, Sister Brooker this morning, I have seen the joy of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. You know why, Brother, Brother Morgan? Because I know people, since I know myself, they have been worshipping and loving God. Sister Brooker is one. Brother Morgan is one. Brother Rodney is one. Sister John is one. Since I met Marlon is one. I know people since I know them, they have been holding on to the love and joy of God. And I know that he has been blessing you in spite of your challenges. So I'm going to pray that he continue, continue. And where there's no fire, he'll put a fire. That he'll light a fire in your tail. Yes, I said it. In your tails. So that you will move. Too much of us. Are warm in the benches. You're looking too pretty? We have a work to do.
Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, oh God, you are good. God, you are wonderful. You sent your Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us today. You sent your Holy Spirit to drive a force within the members of called the church so that they can move. Oh Lord, I'm not praying for those that are thinking to themselves that they don't need you. I'm praying for those that know that they need you. I'm praying for those that are calling right now and saying, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. For without the Spirit, we are nothing. And many of us are nothing because we don't have the Spirit. Fall afresh on your people this morning or this afternoon. Fall afresh, oh God, within their hearts. Move within their homes. Move within their workplace. Move within their communities. Move within their life. Whatever they touch of God, whatever they put their hands to, let it be led by the Spirit. Let the Spirit of God use these members like he used the members of the first church. Yes, you have declared your promise. And now we want to see it fulfilled. Oh God, I pray just as, as, Jeremiah, as Jeremiah prayed, that the, the, the fire will shut up in their bones. Oh Father, as I look at the, the life of Habakkuk, He's asking the question, why? Why this is going on? Why is all this pain and suffering happening? Why it is that we're not moving? Why it is that the people of God isn't where they should be? Your answer is, the just shall live by faith. Let your people live by faith. Let them believe that you can do a good thing within their hearts. Let them believe today, oh God, that when they leave this place, they won't be the same as they came. Father, I ask that you search our hearts. And as we turn our lives over to you as living sacrifices, that the Spirit of God will truly burn a fire within us. For the Spirit of truth is not only the Spirit of truth, but the Spirit of fire burning truth fire to burn us so that we can move because we, we need to move look at where we are we are in 2022 and there is still so much to do we can't do it on our own we can't do it without you for this week for this week oh God we are entering into a communion with you that you will deliver the spirit on us so that we can move like we didn't move before when 2021 we were scared we will have the confidence and the assurance that you will come true oh bless your people oh god bless them there are those that are hurting there are those that are suffering there are those that just need a savior oh i pray that you'll be for them what they can't be for themselves what I can't be for them. What Marlon can't be for them. Do for them, oh God. Because they need it. They are crying out for it. For a transforming, renewing power in their lives. And there are those that are lost. We are going to meet them this year. I pray that you will give us the words to say. I pray that you will give us the touch that we need. Many are touched with disease and viruses. Many are touched with all sorts of things. But we want to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Oh God, we pray in no other name but the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Amen, church. What a word. 
first of all, Brother Rico, Brother, now my pastor. We want to say thank you for such a heart thrilling message. Um, I sat there and goosebumps basically came over me because church, we have a work to do and we have no time to do it. So I just want to thank you again. Thank you. It came from our very own and now we must accept and move forward in by God's grace. closing song this morning is 532 532 day by day and with each passing moment could we stand as we sing our closing song day by day and with each passing moment strength I find to meet my trials
AY will be virtual at 4.30. Please log in at 4.30 for AY program.